Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Tim Hammy at First Summit God in Burlington, Kansas. We're, we're completing our study on the uh, experiencing the power of God, part one, the power of serving. And, and it's Friday the 21st, and I want to encourage you, if you don't have a church and you're in, in Burlington, Kansas, this Sunday I'll be talking about uh, going to war and, and uh, spiritual warfare. And we need to understand that we are at war, and we need to grasp that concept. And I want to encourage you that if you don't have a church in, 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 in Burlington, Kansas, or in Coffee County, and you're looking for a church, come try us out. I, we have a place for you. I, I'll be glad. To, I, I'd like to meet you. If you say, hey, I, I watched your video, and I got your invitation, you're here because of the invitation, I'd love to greet you. But we're going to complete this, this study of the power of serve. Number two, servant requires loyalty. In Luke 16, 13, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Luke 16, 13. And this is what it says. No servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Just meaning that you cannot serve two masters. That's really what he's saying. He says, you have to make a decision. Who are you going to serve? Are you going to try to still serve two masters? And the Bible it says a divided house will fall. And you can't just pick and choose what you're going to serve. You have to serve your master, whatever that may be. Well, I mean, Jesus makes it clear that we can only have one master. See, the illustration gives a, of about materialism. Are you going to continue to go after materialism? Or are you going to say, hey, God, if you provide it for me, awesome, off the hook. Or are you going to say, God, I'm going to follow you always. Number two, the, the final aspect of the scripture of servant, I, wanna, I want you to understand. Servanthood requires readiness. In Luke 20, 12, let me get my Bible. Luke 12, 35 to 40, listen to this. Be, be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like men w waiting for the ma their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching and when he comes. I tell you the truth, he who dresses himself to serve will have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. You say, well, what does that have to do with servant? You have to be ready. I love, T.U. Jakes is one of my favorite speakers, and he says this, be, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. I mean, you got to get ready for whatever God wants to do in your life. You have to be ready to be used. You have to be willing to be used. And, and servants need to be ready to do uh, the will of the master at all times. Check this out. I'm a pastor. <laughs> you want to say, duh. Anyways, but the fact is, I have been called in the middle of the night. I have gone out at midnight, one, two, three in the morning. And I have, I, the thing is, I've been, I've been in the ministry for a long time, and I've actually, I, my cell phone sits next to my bed, so if I get a call in the middle of the night, I'll re answer. If, it, if it's someone that's in need or going to the hospital, I'm, in my, I'm getting dressed because I set my clothes out the night before, and I'm ready because you never know when someone's going to need you. And I think as Christians, we need to understand that there's going to be a point where someone may call on you, and you have to be ready. God's going to call on you, and you need to be ready. See, most Christians make time for Christ when it fits their schedule. You cannot put God in a box. You cannot put God in a schedule. You cannot say, oh, I think at 5.30 someone's going to call me. I'm going to help them. And that's when God's going to call me. God, you never know when God's going to use you or God's going to schedule. Readiness is not a priority to make because they, they falsely believe. They have all the time in the world. We must be ready as Christians. We must be ready for Christ to call us. We must be ready to stand up when the time is coming. We need to be ready at all times. We need to be, because we never know when we will get the call of the Master. We need to be ready when Christ is ready for us to serve. We must to step up. We must step up when God calls us. You say, well, well, you know, I, I, I serve in the church. But you know what? That's great. What do you do outside the church for Christ? 
You say, well, I, uh, guess what? We need to get off our, 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 our high knees and do something. You say, well, that's pretty straightforward, Pastor. Guess, guess what? You know, I may be the pastor of my church, but I'm out in the community. I, I, I love to get out in the community. I love hanging out with people. I love getting to know new people. I have a lot of friends that don't even go to my church. Why? Because I like to hang out with people. And so I'm going to tell you something. That, yeah, we need to have a church, and we need to go to church, and we need to fellowship with other believers. But we also need to be a blessing to those around us. The question I've always been asked, do you know your neighbors? Do you tell them about Jesus? Do you lead them to the Lord? Do you ask them about the Lord? Do you invite them to church? You say, well, they don't want to go to church. How do you know? Have you ever asked them? Hmm? See, the fact is, I'm not very good at going to my neighbors, but I, I know my neighbors... I do. I know my neighbors. I know them around. I've the the. I live in a in a, in a place that I ha, I know the neighbors around my house. I've talked to every single one of them. I've invited some of them to church. I've invited them to Bible studies, um, and I know them. I I brought them Thanksgiving meal. A, a couple of my my neighbors. But the fact is, you know what? Be ready to serve whenever God calls you to serve. You say, well. Pastor Tim, you're just you're beating this thing down. I'm I'm just encouraging get out of your comfort zone a little bit and serve the Lord. Amen. Now, you may not want to say amen, but that's okay. Let me pray for you, Lord. I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you that Lord God, you challenge us. I pray that you bless every person that watches this. I pray that Lord that you'll give them a great opportunity to share the gospel with somebody this week, Lord. In your name, Amen. God bless you. Have a great, great rest of the weekend. Hope to see you on Sunday. Be in your local church. Find a church. God bless you. Bye-bye.